Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. Some of the topics in this chapter do involve a little bit of algebra. All right, so if you're having any trouble with that, you know, don't be shy, don't put it off, come to my office and we'll work on it, okay? So, but today we will do some to practice as well. We're going to uh, focus on 9.1 and 9.2, a couple of topics, primarily those that involve setting up and solving equations. Uh, there's going to be diagrams that you have to analyze and each diagram has angles in it and there are different relationships between the angles depending on what diagram you're talking about. So in order to work up to the point where we can solve some of these problems, I'd like to focus on what are the possible relationships when you have basically lines and rays intersecting. Okay, so for example, um, on the left, the first figure on the left over here, notice that we have a straight line and then coming off of that straight line, we have a ray. Okay, so this forms how many different angles that you can see. Um, here's an angle, right? Let's call that angle A. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to give a name to it. Here's another angle, B. And there are more angles. You can think of this. What's this kind of angle called that's 180 degrees? Do you remember? It's got a special name because it forms a straight line. It's called a straight angle. And together, angles A and B also form a straight angle, don't they? So what could I say is the relationship between angle A and angle B? How, how do their measures relate to each other? They will add up to 180, that's right. Anytime you have a straight angle like that, that's being cut into two pieces, what we know is that angle A plus angle B has to add up to 180 degrees. So you'll be given diagrams that are marked in various ways, and you're going to have to use this relationship. Let's look at the next diagram over. What kind of angle is this that we indicate with a, a square like that? What does that mean? 90 degrees. And what's another name for a 90 degree angle? This is called a right angle. Notice that within that right angle, it's been split by a ray again. Let's say this is angle A and this is angle B then. What would be the relationship between angle A and angle B as an equation? That's right. This time angle A plus angle B adds up to 90 degrees. Very good. Okay, now let's look at this other diagram. This is what we get when two lines cross. They're called intersecting lines, right? How many angles appear to be formed when we have intersecting lines? At least four, right? But you can also combine them into larger angles. Yeah, this, I'm going to go ahead and label these. Let's say maybe we'll call this one angle A, this one angle B, this one angle C, and this one angle D. One of the things that happens is the angles across from each other, like angle A and angle B, they're across from each other through the vertex. So because of that characteristic, we refer to these with a special word. What's it called when two angles are across from each other through the vertex? You remember angle A and angle B? They're called vertical angles because it's through the vertex, okay? So angle A and angle B are vertical angles and it turns out that vertical angles are always equal. So we could say if anytime we're given a diagram and we have to analyze angles and it's two lines intersecting, you can look and see that there are a couple of pairs of vertical angles. Angle A must be equal to angle B. And what else? Angle C must be equal to angle D. That's right. Vertical angles are equal. There are other relationships hidden within here as well. For example, what would you get if you added angle A plus angle C? a straight angle, which is 180 degrees. So you also could have many, you could come up with several equations like that, right? What, what are two other angles we could add up and get 180? B and D, B and C, A and D, right? So that, that is something you could use as well. So there are not only vertical angles, but also 
straight angles in there. And then the other kind of diagram that we'll commonly see is a diagram with, actually, I need to update this diagram. It's missing a little piece of information. You have to have these little marks on here to show that these two lines are what? Parallel, very good. So anytime you have two parallel lines cut through by a third line, we call that line a transversal, and there are many angles formed. And some of the pairs have relationships that we've already seen. For example, um, if I call this angle A and this angle B, they add up to what? 180, that's right. But also we have vertical angles, right? Angle A, and I'm gonna label this angle C. Those are vertical to each other. They're across through the vertex. So angle A would be equal to angle C. But there are other relationships that we have not discussed yet that are unique to this diagram. And I wanna focus on those. Angle A and angle F, for example. These are called corresponding angles. Relative to the parallel lines, they're both above, right? And they're both on the same side as the transversal. So they correspond to each other in that way. And it turns out that corresponding angles are equal. It must be because that transversal is cutting through at the same angle to both of those parallel lines. All right, another relationship in this diagram that's unique to this type of diagram would be the relationship between angle A and angle G. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're on the outside or exterior of the two parallel lines. Does anyone remember what that's called from the videos? Angle A and angle G are called alternates because they're on opposite sides of the transversal. Good. Exterior, because they're on the outside of the parallel lines, angles. And guess what? They're equal to, which makes sense because we know angle A is equal to angle F because they're corresponding and angle F and angle G are vertical angles. So they're the same too. So it must be that alternate exterior angles are equal. All right. How about, can anyone tell me the relationship the special relationship between angles D and E. Angles D and E are called alternate in interior angles. So we could set up the equation angle D equals angle E as well because alternate interior angles that are on the inside of the two parallel lines are also equal. Okay, so that's my little review of all the different relationships that we can get when you have intersecting lines like these, lines and rays. And now I'm going to go down to these problems here. So what will happen is you'll be asked to find the measure of what they're calling marked angles in a diagram. Which is what we're gonna do in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.